Well, it's been 20 years since former Indiana Governor Frank O'Bannon passed away in 2003. His death marks one of the most somber days for the Hoosier State. For tonight's Unfiltered, former First Lady Judy O'Bannon talks about her late husband's legacy and how much Indiana has changed since then. Well, I think the fact that he was a good person. Uh, he almost personified what we think of as a Hoosier. Lee Hamilton once said, you know, we always say, what, is a Ho what does the word Hoosier mean? And one time he said, well, look at Frank O'Bannon. And I think he saw those qualities uh, that sometimes we who are busy doing daily things don't see among ourselves. I think Hoosiers are wonderful, but I don't think they think much of themselves sometimes. And he really had those good qualities they have. And... Uh, I think they saw that as leadership. I hope they feel that today, that in themselves that's what makes a good leader. His father was the head of Senate Finance for years through both Republicans and Democrats. Finance is the core of politics. And to think that they trusted this, he was a little guy who was wiry, you know. Um, but everybody trusted him. And I think Frank was so at home with all kinds of people because they really liked him and identified with him, so that they had that trust. And when I think of the things he did, um, he and Stephen Goldsmith got the funding for Gamebridge Fieldhouse. You know, he, they ran against each other yeah. at one time. Uh, he and Sue Ellen Reed had those education roundtables yeah. where they said, don't just have people who, who have degrees in teaching, You've got to have business people, arts people, people from church, people social services. Because the more diversity you have, people with differing ideas can come together. And you say, oh, there's some new ideas. There's lots of options t to take advantage of opportunities. If everybody comes to the table with the same ideas, you go out with the same idea you came in with. You don't get anywhere. So he really could work with people from both sides. And when he, his father had been in the Senate, broke the tie, voted with the Republicans, got the two bridges across the Ohio River. And Frank, as a kid, said he remembered his grandfather, who uh, Dal ran once for the U.S. Senate, uh, always said, we're going to get those bridges across the Ohio River right away. Well, his father broke the tie on that and got the penny on um, the um, sales tax to put the bridges. But Frank O'Bannon spoke at the opening. He knew that you do go across generations, you do it across party, and would say, there's just no limit to where you go if you don't care who gets the credit. I do know that he took it seriously, everything, to see that uh, some people didn't get benefits and other people didn't, to see that it was an equal playing field, and he thought education was a big part of that. Oh my gosh, he wanted so much, you know, all day kindergarten. Uh, he was sure he'd get that. It was just, you know, Put in recently. It just takes a long time uh, to build those things. Just uh, he he felt that the economy and the taxation needed to be fair, and uh, depended on the team of fiscal analysts he had around him to give him guidance. I think that's one of the reasons that he was able to really do things. He wasn't this big splash and dash guy. He was soft spoken, but he surrounded himself with smart, really honest, caring, compassionate, experienced people. And they gave him advice. And sometimes it works, and sometimes your best efforts don't work, you know. And those, some, uh, I know you, when we had the fish kill, it was just awful. Frank loved um, the natural environment. He walked around our farm, you know, with binoculars. I would always say, what's your face look like down here? We don't know. you got these things on your eyes. And um, people knowing that he had those interests concerned expect now all our problems will be solved. We have an environmentalist. Well, it doesn't work that way. Everybody's got different problems, different priorities, and options pop up at different times. You just have to be uh, surround yourself with good, smart, capable, open people. And uh, when you make mistakes, admit it and try to find a new avenue. I think that uh, it might be in a sense good that it's sort of conflicting now that maybe people will hopefully wake up and say, wait a minute, they call it a participatory representative democracy. What does that mean? Frank grew up in a little town 
where everybody had to pitch in or nothing happened. And he grew up with a family that said, you have responsibilities. You get trained so you can do the best you can when you fulfill those responsibilities. So he did such things as, you know, Second World War, played the trumpet. For some time, somebody died in Harrison County, and they were commemorating, memorialized that. Well, as a kid, that does something to you. Oh, yeah. Makes you feel part of the team, makes you feel responsible, uh, makes you engaged with it all. And I think that uh, these times we're going through now, hopefully people will say, don't just leave it to somebody else to figure out. Uh, if you care, it's more than just going and voting one day. Um, pay attention to who people are. Pay attention to the legislature. I, I've been a, a follower, supporter of people doing public service for years, and my opinion of people in public service is still very high. I think voters are lazy. They just want to look up at a campaign and say, well, that person looks like a leader. I guess I'll remember his or her name and vote for them. Um, we need to prick our brains and attach ourselves more. I think until we have public financing for campaigns, we're gonna, if money buys the thing, well, good grief, we're in trouble.